Hey guys, this is the Wiggle Man, and welcome back to Wiggle's Miniature Workshop. Today we're going to be painting Wolverine's face and cowl. Uh, I put out a uh, vote on the channel asking if you'd like to see a full painting tutorial video for this. Five of you voted yes, one of you really likes boobies. So to begin with, we start off with a grey primer undercoat, and I start putting down uh, Vallejo model colour, flat flesh as my initial uh, skin tone. Just going all over the model with the airbrush until we've got a decent saturation uh, around where the skin's going to be. My goal for this project was, well, obviously Wolverine, he wears the bright yellow suit traditionally, uh, and I thought this would have been a good opportunity to do something bright, colourful and vibrant, as opposed to my last project, which was very grim, dark and um, uh, very, uh, yeah, very desaturated. Um, so if you haven't checked out that video, it's up there in the corner right now, uh, but go check it out after you've watched this one. And as a matter of fact, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, uh, let me know how I'm doing. And if you stay tuned, you'll even get to see a peel reveal later on. So next up, we are going to be adding a highlight to the skin using Vallejo Model Color Basic Skin Tone. Again, we're just aiming in, in kind of a zenithal angle, uh, going from top to the bottom of the model with the spray pattern. I was spraying it quite a high PSI because it's quite thick paints, uh, even when I thinned it down. Uh, and at the moment, I'm just kind of avoiding, I'm, I'm not really too fussed about getting paint on the cowl itself because we're just focusing on the skin at the moment. I then mixed together Scarlet Red and Warlord Purple in a 50-50 mix and it didn't really look very good so I added a bit of Express Colour as an experiment and it did nothing. <laughs> um... I don't know what I expected. I figured I'd check out uh, how Express mixes with traditional acrylic paints didn't really do anything, um, but yeah, now was the time to uh, airbrush into the mouth and get kind of the, the deeper red fleshy bits of the mouth done. I'm not truly worried about overspray at this stage because I do know that next stage we're going to be putting some shadows onto the flesh anyway and that'll kind of hide uh, any overspray that we do around the mouth. Although it does look kind of cool, like he's, he's, he's got a, a bit of a bloodied up mouth, like he's taking a good old punch to the face. <laughs> So now we're going to be using Vallejo Model Color uh, Medium Skin Tone to add in some shadows around the face. It's a very, very yellow tinge to it, as you'll see on the video now. Um, I felt like that would kind of be the play to go with, considering the rest of the, the armor and the cowl is going to be yellow. So there's going to be a natural reflection of the light onto his skin anyway, uh, casting kind of a yellow shade onto him. Next, we're going to be using one of my all-time favorite colors for painting faces, which is Liquitex Acrylic Ink. It's the Muted Pink, and it gives you a very, very nice uh, kind of a deep magenta, almost a kind of a, a sangria color. And we use that to kind of make the cheeks look more flushed. Uh, a little bit of a splatter there on the side of the cowl, sorry. It happens. Um, and also we use it at the bottom of the lip, basically anywhere where blood's kind of tense underneath the skin and would make uh, the character look more flush. Uh, 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 
So back to the Vallejo model color basic skin tone this time. And we're once again going to be adding back in those uh, highlights onto the skin. And we're going to see one of the first happy little accidents that happens uh, during this painting process. So I wasn't entirely sure what I was going, oh, there we go, it just happened. I wasn't entirely sure what, how I was going to highlight the song. Uh, and actually, uh, I had, uh, uh, I guess it was some trapped moisture in the, in the uh, airbrush tubing, uh, shot out a glob of uh, the basic skin tone color that I had in my airbrush. And lo and behold, that actually made a really nice highlight. It landed exactly on the tip of the tongue and made it a really, really nice highlight. So I'm just going to roll with that and keep going from there. Next up, we're going to block in the teeth of the model. We're going to be using Vallejo Game Color Bone White. If you know, if you've watched enough of my videos at this point, you'll know that I love, I, I really enjoy painting teeth, actually, I don't know why. Um, but for brighter teeth, I'll always start with uh, a bone white color. Whereas if I'm going for more kind of like long fangs of like monsters and things like that, I'll start with a khaki color and then I'll work my way up from there. But on we go with the teeth painting montage. If there's any advice that I can give when it comes to painting teeth, it is to make sure that you are leaving, trying to leave the gaps between each tooth because that adds a lot more depth without having to give it a wash. So now we're going to block in the eyes of the mask, uh, which is a bit of a wasted step because later on I end up uh, going back over it anyway. But we are using Vallejo Game Color Dead White for the eyes because Wolverine's cowl has just plain white eyes on it. Uh, I didn't get the full footage from this this part here because the eyes are very, very inset. And if you paint miniature eyes, you know, you gotta be focused and the camera was in my way. I then took that same Vallejo dead white color that we just used on the eyes and just highlighted the tips of each tooth as well to give a very, very subtle trans transaction transition uh, and to just kind of make the teeth pop out a little bit more. To finish off the highlighting of the skin, I took the Vallejo basic skin tone that we'd used earlier for the last airbrush Zenithal highlight. 
I gave it a one-to-one -one mix with a glaze medium and then I just glazed it over the lips and I also glazed it around the top of the uh, kind of the corners of the mouth where where near the cow you'll see in a minute I'm not sure what that part of the face is called but it's just next to the cheeks I was considering uh, also highlighting the top lip as well. And then I realized actually he's screaming really, really loudly and he's really, really angry as Wolverine is and realized that uh, as you open your mouth that wide, you kind of fold your, your top lip in, inside your mouth. So there wasn't really anything to highlight. I was also sat in my shed making this that, that very face that you can see there looking like a bit of a silly idiot. So for the final step of the skin, we're using Vallejo Express Color Dwarf Flesh, and we're going to be basically pin lining all the way around the edge of the cowl to give it a bit of depth. Also, when I get to the kind of the folds underneath the cheeks, I also glaze, I'd say glaze that, but basically just run it down about, I'd say a quarter, even a fifth of the way down from the top of the cow, just to add a bit more definition around the, uh, on, on his uh, uh, screamy lines on his face. I'm not very technical with words, am I? So that about does it for the flesh of the model. Um, at this th this stage here was when I took the photo and uh, put the poll up on the channel. Then I decided, let's take it a bit further. Let's paint the cowl as well. So I masked off all the work that we've done on the mouth with some good old fashioned blue tack. So thank you to System Error 323 for that suggestion there. Thumbs up to you, mate. And then I base coated the model once again with a nice yellow rattle cap. I'm now applying a Zenithal highlight with Vallejo Game Color Moon Yellow, which is kind of a cooler one. There's a moon yellow and a sun yellow. The moon yellow is a lot cooler. Now to assist with this next stage, I've really, really dropped the aperture on my ca uh, camera just to kind of raise how much contrast that there is in what you're seeing right there. But I'm now taking that moon yellow and I'm going to be highlighting the uh, the, the scowly bits of the cow where, it, where he's kind of got the wrinkles from his, his angry, angry uh, furrowed brow. Next, we're going to be using the masking silicone that I used in the last video, painting Lilith. Again, link is up in the corner right there. Go watch it, it's really, really good. I'm really proud of it. Um, and we're going to be painting over the yellow area of the cowl. I decided to give this stuff another go on a miniature um, because I don't think I gave it its proper due. And actually, I'm really, really happy how it came out. Um, Yes, it looks a bit weird um, and it does smell awful, god awful. If you ever use masking silicone, it, it, it smells like pee. 
I, there's basically pee inside of it. Um, but yeah, so I'm laying it down now. I gave it about 10 minutes to dry. I was blowing it with the airbrush as well uh, before I moved on to the next stage. So as you can see, the uh, masking silicone's basically dried pretty transparent. Um, at this point, when I figured it had dried, I got my airbrush, I got some Vallejo game color, good old fashioned black, and I just sprayed all over the cow. At this point, even with the masking silicone underneath, I actually was quite, I thought it looked quite cool, kind of the effect we had going on with the cowl here, um, just with kind of just that airbrush effect uh, in the transition. So one to keep in mind in future. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the peel reveal. So taking off the blue tack off the model, um, that was a bit of a pain. Uh, if you've ever used blue tack before, you know it can leave a bit of residue behind. But it's very, very easy to take the kind of remains of the blue tack back off. As long as you take a bigger clump of blue tack and just dab it over the areas where there's blue tack left behind, it should pick it up pretty easily. Now for the much more satisfying peel reveal, we're gonna be taking off the silicone. Ooh, let's go. I use a left, an old needle from an old airbrush to basically get under the uh, silicone and then it just works its magic from there. You wanna get enough where you can grab it with your fingers. You pull away and you just, you don't move essentially. You let the elasticity of the silicone do the work for you. Uh, you can see I'm very putting very little force onto actually pulling this off. I'm letting it do all the work for me. But yeah, oh, this felt good. Next, we're back to doing the eyes. This time I am giving an initial layer of uh, Vallejo Game Color Cold Grey. Uh, as kind of a base for the eyes and then I go back over it with my titanium white uh, acrylic ink to make the whiteness of the eyes. So that does it. For the face of Wolverine, we still have the black to highlight on the cowl. However, my plan is to do that in a future video once we've done all of the black. So there's gonna be black on kind of the main body. There's gonna be black on his gloves as well. And we'll do that all at once in one go. Um, if you liked the video, once again, please subscribe. That'd be lovely, fantastic. Um, let me know if you want to see more of this painting process. Um, I probably won't repeat steps that I've already done in future videos, uh, but yeah, thank you very much for joining me. See you soon. Bye-bye for now.